Hi everyone, it's Kylie the Jellyfish. <laughs> I'm going to be doing a whole video series talking to my viewers about how to color the hair on your head all by yourself at home for beginners. So I just asked people on my Instagram, I basically have a whole bunch of notes about how to dye hair for beginners, um, but what I realized is that even a portion of this would be a whole video and I'm going to be editing for 700 hours. I'm going to try my best to film all of this in one day, uh, but forgive me if I don't. I am going to put it all into one playlist and right here you can go ahead and click on that playlist or it'll be in the description below or just go to my channel Kylie the Jellyfish and look at my playlists. I also have a whole playlist on every single video on my channel that has to do with hair color and I also have a separate playlist on how to turn hair silver. But what I've realized is the quality of my channel has kind of improved over the years and a lot of my videos are really old and outdated and I say um a lot. I have a lot of grainy old videos that are super shaky footage and I wasn't the best at editing either. So now without further ado, I'm going to make a very official version of my accumulation of knowledge. Yeah. Ooh, it's going to storm. All right, so this first video is about prepping your hair for a hair dye. When you start coloring your hair, just know that your hair's never gonna go back to virgin. If you color your hair and you damage it, putting dark back on top of your color is not making it any healthier. It's not making it shinier, it's not making it stronger, it's not going to make it grow faster. If you already have made your hair light, consider keeping it light, unless you really want to make it dark. But don't dye your hair black just because you're sick of the damage. That's one mistake I see a lot of people make, and a lot of my clients actually come in being like, I just want to make it all dark because I'm, you know, I'm sick of sick of the damage and sick of the breakage and I'm like okay color looks shiny for the first few weeks color makes the hair feel silky in the beginning because whenever you're putting something onto a cuticle whenever you're smoothing down the hair strand with a layer of basically anything it's going to have a temporary effect of looking and feeling healthier and shinier and brand new especially with the whole idea of you look new you have a new look you're fresh, you, you've just done something. So it's always gonna look better than what it was. I mean, like, I could literally give someone a blow dry and they would look like a brand new person if they come in with nasty hair. So if you really wanna color your hair dark and it was originally light, make sure it's because you're sick of touching up your roots. Make sure it's because you actually want to have dark hair for a longer period of time, as in at least half a year, at least and if not half a year, longer. But I mean, if you're gonna be going to the store and looking for color, please go to your local beauty supply, um, a, a Sally's Beauty Supply, or any other kind of beauty store. Um, don't just go to Giant and get the first box dye you see. I will not hate on anyone who does box dye regularly and it works for them, that's cool. If I have someone in my chair asking for a medium rich brown, and then I have another person in my chair asking for a medium rich brown and they both have different hair. I'm going to mix totally different formulas for them. I'm going to leave it on for a totally different amount of time, a different ratio, a different tonality, different application. They're going to be different because they have different hair. But when you buy something in a box, they are supposed to manufacture it in a way that it can cover every single type of person's hair. That means the thickest hair, the most resistant hair. So if you have really fine hair or hair that lifts well or easily or hair that is more fragile, you are getting so much pigment in such a harsh level packed into that cuticle and it's going to be a thousand times harder to take it out. And if it's already in there, I mean, you're just going to have to live with it or cut it off or fry it off. <laughs> like You can try. You can try removing the color because there are methods and I'll have a whole separate video on uh, removal methods which I also don't even know everything about. I'm just gonna tell you what I know. You're better off to just find a brand from a beauty store that you like. Do some research, like look at videos on YouTube. The way I learned how to do hair originally was to go on YouTube and look stuff up. And I'm also not even really going to be talking about very many brands in this uh, series. 
if I mention something like, oh, a product that is a color locking leave-in conditioner, pause the video and type in color locking leave-in conditioner and someone else will give you a good example of what that might be. But there's so many brands out there and I just can't remember all of them off the top of my head. So um, I'll give you the ones that I do think of, but overall there's too many recommend because it also depends on your hair like if your hair is curly thick frizzy fine straight I'm gonna be referring you to a different product so to prep your hair before color if you are bleaching your hair if you're going lighter if you're removing color if you're doing anything other than depositing actual color have dirty hair so if you're gonna be applying like a ammoniated product that you mix with developer Make sure your hair is dirty, make sure it's got some oil in there, um, especially if you're putting bleach on your scalp. The reason why this is important is because these products, especially with either ammonia or uh, peroxide in them, they are going to have properties that will eat through your hair no matter what is on it. Now if you have like a thick hard gel on your hair or like a really really thick amount of product that you, if you can't run your fingers through your hair then rinse it out but let your hair be dirty because if you're putting something directly onto your scalp your scalp will always do better with a barrier like a layer of sebum sebum is the oil that your scalp will naturally produce and it is a moisturizing natural property for your body and it will protect it from the harsh chemicals like bleach if you are applying a fashion color a fashion color is semi-permanent, like Arctic Fox, Manic Panic, Lunar Tides, Pulp Riot, Pravana. These products are non-oxidative color. They're basically conditioner in pigment. So if you put that on your hair, make sure your hair is dry and squeaky clean. So shampoo it, but try your best to not put conditioner in it. If your hair is super tangly and you can't do anything without conditioner in it, then go ahead and put some conditioner in your hair. It's not going to matter that much, but it does help. Um, and then definitely don't have products in your hair afterwards. Like don't put oils in your hair. Don't put anything like um, dry shampoo or a, a, a gel, obviously. Don't put products in your hair right before you're going to do a fashion color. Um, so like this hair, if I were to dye this orange, which I'm actually going to dye it later this week, if I put orange on it, it's going to look a lot better if I wash it and then let it air dry and then color it first. You can also look at the packaging and decide if they recommend putting it on wet hair, damp hair, dry hair. What I've learned though is that it's usually best to put it on dry hair because when hair already has water in the cuticle, like within the hair shaft, it's gonna dilute the product a little bit. It's gonna make those more porous areas um, and more resistant areas pick up the pigment differently. And you just, you just want dry hair for that. If you're coloring your hair a dark color, make sure you find your heaviest moisturizer and or Vaseline like Aquaphor or I don't know, freaking chapstick if you really want to. Put that all over your neck. Put that all over your ears and behind your neck like here and put it all over your hairline. So that's just going to help prevent uh, staining and there's other things you could do like if you take a uh, if you take a cloth and use, this is awful, I'm, <laughs> this is not me saying as a professional, this is me saying as like a girl who does this in my bedroom when I color my hair. Um, dish soap on a towel just like kind of dab away a little bit I, I would obviously use something that you know isn't too abrasive on your skin but I know that dish soap will get dye off of the skin so if I get it on my hands because I don't love using gloves I'll wash that off with dish soap instead of actual soap yeah <laughs> if you're doing a fashion color aka semi-permanent color because your hair should be clean when you're applying it don't shampoo your hair after just rinse it out really really well and use your fingertips to run over your scalp just to make sure you don't have any product left in your hair so like rinse it rinse it rinse it and just kind of like get your fingers in there and rake your fingers through your hair as the water's running down that will just prevent those clump clumps of color staying in your hair obviously 
Oh, and if you are coloring your hair for the first time a vibrant or dark or any kind of unnatural color, make sure after you dye your hair, you use a towel that is dark or a towel that is white that you can bleach back out. Um, just so that you don't stain it and ruin something that someone else get mad about. Um, you might end up staining your bathtub, which in that case you're going to have to clean it with Clorox or something. Um, but I, I'm, it depends on what material I guess your bathroom is made of too. I'm not sure about every type of tile getting stained. And uh, make sure you are using a pillowcase that is dark if you ever fall asleep with slightly damp hair. I do not recommend whatsoever falling asleep with wet hair that can break your hair off, but if you do have wet hair and you lay on a pillow while maybe you're chilling, or if you have white, <laughs> white, um, white fabric on furniture like your mom's couch or something, be very careful about doing anything with freshly colored hair. Even if it's rinsed out very, very well, freshly colored hair will bleed onto fabrics. Put a black t-shirt over your pillowcase and you'll just have that extra barrier there to not ruin your pillow. <laughs> Now, chemical knowledge. So this is something that I wanted to bring up so I don't have to make a separate video on it. Uh, chemical knowledge is going to be basically about mixing developers and bleach. So I have many videos about this, but basically when you're mixing lightener, uh, the ratio will depend on what you're trying to do and what you're trying to cover. A lot of times the best ratio is one to two. So one part bleach powder to two parts developer. Uh, if you have a bleach, let's say you're putting one scoop of that bleach in there, take the same scoop and put developer in that twice. Or I actually have a scale. So if you have a scale in your kitchen, if you have a scale anywhere in your house, that's also going to be a good way of measuring because that's just how it is. It's easier to do it at work than using something that you have to clean up. My favorite products for, I don't know if Sally still carries these particular brands, but the two lighteners that I really like to use from Sally's back when I didn't have a license was Quick Blue by L'Oreal Paris and Kaleido Colors. I think Kaleido Colors is Redken, but I cannot remember if that's true or not. But Kaleido Colors is the best and I don't remember if it still is sold. If you have a license or someone who can buy it for you with a license, I really like Schwarzkopf Blonde Me or Wella Blondor. So developers are peroxide basically, which will activate the lightener uh, into a bleach. The lightener powder is just a dry formula and that's what like turns it on makes it happen if you close it up into an environment and like leave it there it's going to expand and build up and like fluff up into a balloon like a little cloud and that shouldn't happen that means your bleach is over you, know, you put something in it that's ruining it or you left it out too long and it's now probably not going to work as well um, and I've just learned this over like my experience. <laughs> Developers go from 6 volume, I've seen 7 volume, then there's the regular ones, 10 volume, 20 volume, 30 volume, and 40 volume. Please don't ever, ever, ever put anything higher than 20 volume on the scalp. If you're doing scalp application, please stay at 10 volume or 20 volume or even lower if you're super blonde naturally and you're just going white or even if you're dirty blonde like stick with something under 20 volume okay if your roots are really short enough your scalp will heat up the the lightener faster oh and by the way i'm using the word lightener and bleach interchangeably lightener is the term we use in the salon because if someone hears us talking about putting bleach on their hair Typically, they just assume we're putting Clorox on their hair, and that's not true. So we just choose not to freak people out, and I've been told to just not use the word bleach, so I just don't. Um, anyways, bleach is actually all heat activated, so if you're putting something on your scalp, it's developing much faster than on your ends. So that's why typically putting a plastic bag on your head or a shower cap on your head when you're processing your color will help incubate everything and keep it all roughly at the same level of heat. And when lightener also dries out, it stops 
working. So um, if you ever get lightener on the wrong part of your hair, kind of rub it between your fingers until it turns into powder and it'll just dissolve off of your hair and it'll be fine. Now let's say we're extremely slow at, at putting color on the hair. So let's say we mix a little bit of lightener and we start in the back. Start off with, if we're, if we're going from like this dark to this light, start off with 10 volume, one to two, and apply that to the hair until you run out. Then mix your next formula with 15 volume. So one part powder, one part 10 volume, one part 20 volume. Mixing half 10 and half 20 will create 15 volume. And that'll be your next portion of hair. And then if that runs out, that's when you mix another scoop of powder and then just two scoops of 20 volume. So you see you're going up in five volume increments every time you're mixing. This is just a general rule for being able to not over process the first section you did um, and under process the last section you did because by the time you get to the last section you're going to want that to develop a little bit faster than everything else. But if you have help or if you don't have much hair and you can apply it all at once, just start with a low developer, slap that shit on, leave it there for longer because if you go with a lower developer for a longer period of time it's better for your hair than let's say 30 volume or 40 volume slap it on and leave it on for just 20 minutes and rinse it because that's just gonna blast open the cuticle suck out all the pigment in the hair but it's also gonna just destroy it much faster another tip is if you have to bleach your hair multiple times, like let's say one bleach round isn't enough, try your best to spread them out. If you're at home, like if you're in school and you're at home and no one really has to see you, let's say you have like five days before you like really have to have your color perfect because maybe that's the day you're going out, do one bleach application each day. Or, you know, if you're doing this slow enough where you can tone your hair in between and make it look nice, do one bleach application per, per week. If I have someone coming in and going lighter in very slow increments because they want to do it safely, I sometimes have people come in every three weeks to get a service done. Um, but that's usually also for their budget so they don't like blow all their money on one service. The standard ratio for bleach powder to developer is one to two but if you want a more watery consistency or your hair is extremely damaged and you want to do this super gently and super duper slow which I recommend use one to three or even up to one to five if I'm putting something in a foil and I know I'm gonna leave it there forever even if the hair is dark I'm gonna use the lowest developer and I'm gonna mix like one part powder to like seven parts developer with six volume and a lot of people don't believe me like they think that it's just gonna not work and it's gonna lift orange and I'm like no 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 I'm slow and I know my process and it always ends up fine <laughs> like at least I'm not breaking the hair off and then if you want it to be really thick and the hair just needs to open up I don't necessarily recommend this but one to one is a good ratio for having a really really strong developer that is a thicker consistency. Typically one to one can kind of be good for balayage because when you're balayaging hair, uh, you're air processing a feathered on lightener technique. Um, so it, it should look like it's just kind of sitting there and the thicker it is, the higher it will lift. Also, I see people asking questions about this all the time, so I just thought I'd answer. Don't ever put a uh, developer in semi-permanent color. Semi-permanent color is a conditioner-based product, so if you dilute it with conditioner, you'll be fine. Um, but some people think that when someone's putting conditioner in the color in a video, that it's actually developer. It's not. Don't ever put developer in semi-permanent. One last thing I will say before I go is I also really, really like cream lighteners. Cream lighteners are what I would probably recommend if you have fine hair or damaged hair or dry hair, which most of you watching this video probably do if you're trying to figure out how to color hair properly. <laughs> so if you find a oil-based cream lightener on the market that is non-professional, go for it. Try it. I would say read reviews first. Um, I haven't tried any that are non-professional, but on the professional side if you have anyone that could buy one Guy Tang's cream lightener is really nice and 
Wella Blondor cream lightener is also really nice and they have this oil base to them where when you lift hair it lifts slowly and it doesn't turn very cool but as long as you get it light enough you can tone it cool. Um, it just makes the hair process lift so much more gently and it leaves the hair a lot less damaged and a lot less dry. So I would recommend looking into that but like I said, I'm not sure how available it is for non-professional users. <laughs> okay, so for my chemical knowledge and my prepping, I think that's all I really need to talk about. Um, I'm sorry if this video wasn't that interesting. This is going to be hard to edit. Okay, bye. I'm going to see you guys in the next videos. So click one of these or look at my playlist.